Okay, I greet everyone in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this word to the hearts of all those who listen in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we move forward as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Heavenly Father, that the people that want to go into ministry must first learn to plow a trade, do a profession of some sort so that they can earn a living that the way Paul did it was when they needed the extra income he was able to work making tents and sell the tents to make an, to make extra income to support his ministry and not be a burden on the ministries wherever he was in Jesus name Amen guys this message is so important right now with um, a lot of churches around the world struggling financially and we are facing with situations where um, a lot of churches don't know what to do and let's start with the scripture 2 Thessalonians 3 chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 for even when we were with you we gave you this rule the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. That's a lot of people who don't want to do anything else. They just, especially in ministry where situations have People have got used to just getting a nice salary in the ministry, getting a nice and living comfortably, and the tough times come and they're not prepared to do um, any extra work to make an extra living so that their salaries can come down to take the burden off the local church. And they're not prepared to do it. Even though the church is battling and even situations where you might find a senior pastor giving up his salary to pay another salary in the church and it's someone that's young that can go and make a living so and there's a lot of this going on in the worldwide church and it needs to be addressed and there must be correction we need to be able to earn a living that's why before people go into ministry they must first learn a trade or plow a profession of some sort so that and you do it for years so that you're good at it and you can use it for the rest of your life so that you go into ministry um, you can support your ministry and you can don't need to be a burden on the local church or local ministry wherever you are at the moment the churches basically are taking on full-time people to do this and to do that and it's a massive financial burden on the church when times get tough and it needs to change it's not working it this the big mega church can handle it because they have a lot more people they have a lot more tithes and offerings but the small little church on the corner of the street in the local community that small little church when times get tough, there simply isn't money to pay these salaries. And that's a big problem. And it needs to change. The whole way we do church and ministry, it must change. We want people pastoring churches that basically do it on a lay basis. You want to, We want to move away from all these enormous financial burdens of salaries for full-time people in ministry and move to rather using a lay using lay pastors lay ministers so everyone basically in the church is working earning a living and then they serve in the free time and you just have a bare skeleton staff at the church that are earning salaries and those that are earning salaries that base skeleton must be prepared to sacrifice their salary in tough times and go and work as well. That's ideally the situation that we, the, the right mindset. We need that kind of mindset. 
that even the be even the senior pastor he must be prepared to not take a salary and sacrifice his salary and actually go and plow a trade when the times are tough so that the church has money to pay the lights and water and to pay running costs and and whatever other and to still be able to function as a proper church and do things and have the finances to do things like have youth events like have functions and and be a, a blessing to the community but needs money to do that in acts chapter 18 verse 2 to 3 paul went to see aquila and priscilla and because he was of the same trade he stayed with them and they worked for by trade they were tent makers so yeah is scripture to support this pastors must not say i'm called to be a pastor and that's my calling and that's all i can do that is not the right mindset okay you can't say oh well i'm called to be a pastor i'm called to be evangelist so that's all i'm going to do for the rest of my life no paul the apostle was called to be a pastor he's an apostle a prophet a preacher a teacher he did it all but he also had support from the local churches and when the and when the financial support wasn't there he would work as a tent maker he used to build tents that was his skill and we need to bring that back into the church people are going into full-time ministry without any other school any without any other skill other than having done a course in theology And they, we're not getting that spiritual growth in the church. We're getting people in the church who say, well, I'm called to be evangelist. That's all I've got to do. And, and then when he can't find work as an evangelist, he's not prepared to do anything else. His wife must work. Until, until he finds another uh, opening as a, as a minister. And that's completely contrary to the way it should be we want to be in a situation where both husband and wife both have a skill of a trade or profession of some sort both are able to earn a living and both are prepared to support the ministry financially when needed and not one just basically taking a hiatus and loafing until something comes up no and then the other spouse must take uh, must uh, um, shoulder the burden until the other one gets something that he wants and only what he wants if he's an evangelist he only wants to do evangelism or pastor and we're not and it just we not you don't grow spiritually and mature in the, the love of Christ without being in the fiery furnace you've got to get into the fiery furnace you've got to get in there with where, whether it be with all the backstabbing and all the poli, poli, all the political maneuvering and everything else that comes with working in a, at a company small company or big company It's, it's healthy, it's important, it's good. You've got to learn how to handle all these situations, work with difficult people, and make a living. Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. This is Paul the Apostle. We were not idle when we were with you. Nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. Yeah, Paul the Apostle is teaching us, those that have got the calling on them to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ, be a pastor, preacher, evangelist, apostle, whatever. We must be prepared to support the very ministry that we are called to minister. 
when needed. So if you are called to be a pastor, evangelist or whatever, before you go into full-time ministry, you need to have some sort of trade or profession that you can do as Paul. Because Paul, from his youth, learned to make tents and he used that trade for the rest of his life in support of his ministry, even when he was called into full-time ministry. And that's the example that he set for us. But in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate, that's the example that Paul the Apostle, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Father and the Son, wanted us to follow. It's this example, guys. So that we are prepared to work hard. And not just have a cushy, comfortable uh, a life within the church. Pastoring, sp preaching the sermon on a Sunday, Saturday afternoon or evening, preparing the message, doing the odd wedding, doing the odd funeral, cruising. It doesn't, it's not the fiery furnace that can, that can refine you with fire. But it was encountered to him, the author and finish of our faith, with much joy in making the captain of our salvation perfect with many sufferings. Blessed are you when you are reviled and persecuted for the gospel of Jesus Christ, say, for great is your reward in heaven. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, for the Lord chastens whom he loves. It's a place where the Lord can prune your branches. So that you bear more fruit. For Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and the Father is the vine dresser. And the Father comes to prune up branches that we can bear more fruit. That we can grow in the love of Christ. Grow in godly character. Grow in godly discipline. It doesn't come from being in the comfort zone. It comes from being in the fiery furnace. So, this is for all the pastors, people in full-time ministry right now. Your churches are financially struggling. You need to be prepared to forsake your salary and go and earn a living. And with that income, support your very church that was you were taking a salary from. Do you get me? Not, no, well, I'm only called to evangelists, so I'm sorry, that's all I'm going to do for the rest of my life. No, we're going to follow the, as, a, we are, as followers of Christ, we're going to follow the example that God told Paul and showed him to give us to follow and that is to plow a trade or profession to support our ministry and when necessary to not even take a salary to go and make a living and take from that salary to support the very church we were today we were taking a salary from that is the right mindset that is how it must be done we must be prepared to make sacrifices and compromises for the cause of Christ, so that there's no financial burden on the local church. And it also helps you to be able to do what God placed on my heart many years ago. You work six years, and then you take a full year off. You take a break. So in those six years, you're working as a minister or whatever, you apply your trade on the side as well, you double your income. Because, I mean, working in full-time ministry, how much time does it take off your hands? You know what I'm saying? You've got so much free time. You can do something else to make extra living so that you still enjoy your time off. You still enjoy your Mondays off and Tuesdays off or whatever. And then on the seventh day, you take a rest. And the Lord doesn't want it only for full-time ministers. We should all follow that model. We should live, we should work for six years and the seventh day, we take a nice year off. And let the Lord guide us in this, in Jesus' name. But let us be prepared. Before, we, we need to teach the people coming out of school, please don't go into full-time ministry straight away. First, go and learn a trade or a profession of some sort. Go work in that trade. Do as Paul the Apostle did before you go into full-time ministry. Jesus took tradesmen and professionals he took accountants, tax collectors, fishermen, people that all were playing a trade or profession that were able to earn a living. Before he took them into full-time ministry. Did the same with Paul. Paul was a tent maker. 
That is, the, that is the model that Christ has set for us through his Apostle Paul. And we need to follow that example. That is how it must be done. And that is the route we must follow. We want strong men and women in God in the church. We don't want spiritual babies. We want, we want mighty men and women of God. People that can handle the, the pressure, that can handle the insults, that can handle rebuke, that can handle chastening. That rise to the occasion in Jesus' name. That's what we want. We want mountains for Christ. Towering mountains that the nations can look to for leadership and guidance in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this word to all those that are hearing it. Let us change our mindsets. Let us be prepared to plow a trade. And even if you are 30, 40, 50 years old, it's never too late to go and study a little course, whatever, some plow, some professional trade, whatever, teaching, carpentry, law, accounting, mechanical, fitter and turner, electrical, whatever. It's never too late to go and learn some trade that you can use to make a living. So that you can always have something to fall back on to make a living when needed. In Jesus' name. And to help your spiritual growth. Heavenly Father, bless this message to all our hearts in Jesus' name. Let us run with it as a church. Let us set the right example for those of us in ministry, prepared to be prepared to make sacrifices and support the very church that was supporting us and also to set the right example for those coming out of school that, wanted, that have got the call in their lives to just postpone it. Don't go into full-time ministry. Wait. First do a trade or profession of some sort. Go and earn a living, get into the fiery furnace, and then let the Lord guide you so that you do ministry on a lay basis. And we should actually do full-time only as like, we want to get away from, 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 from that model that we currently have where churches are taking on too many in full-time and they're not setting them up. It's basically not, it's just like I've said, let's leave us what I've said. Let's, let's fix it and let's go forward in Jesus' name. Amen.